If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell icon to get the latest updates. So this is our second session. Uh, in the first session, we went over um, some basics of Workday, what Workday is, what are the core concepts of Workday. We did an overview on what organizations are, what are jobs and positions, what is security, how does the user interface looks like, and all the good stuff. So today we are moving on and we are going deeper into the organizations. Okay, so like I mentioned, there are various kinds of organizations in Workday, but what is core to HCM, right? So, and what is an organization, first of all? So an organization is used to group resources, workers, and costs to support a particular business function. Workday supports several organization types, but the primary organization structure for HCM is the supervisory org. Right, like I said, there are various kinds of organizations, which I will tell you, but the primary one for HCM, <clears throat> excuse me, is the supervisory org. The workers are grouped and tracked within a supervisory org. So let's say you are going out there and you're applying for a position, right? There's a job out there and you apply for that job. Let's say the job is um, senior developer. And when you join as a senior developer in an organization, you join a specific supervisory org because you got to be managed somewhere, right? So that supervisory org could be IT department. You could be working with the human resources department. You could be working with the finance department. So whatever the kind of position is, that position is under a specific supervisory org. All your peers in that specific supervisory org, they are all there with you because the organization wants to manage you in a hierarchical hierarchy structure, right? So when they want to manage you in a hierarchy structure, they want to create a supervisory org. That is where they would manage you, right? So the workers, workers are employees or contractors. And so workers is a workday terminology. Going forward, a worker, what it means is it means either you are an employee, could be a full-time or a part-time or a seasonal worker, could be anything, or you could be a contractor, right? A contractor is um, a contingent worker in Workday, but that is still a worker. So the workers are grouped and tracked within a supervisory org. We will focus on supervisory org and then look at other common organization types that can be created and maintained. Like I said, the core organization for HCM is supervisory org. The commonly used ones are company, cost center, and region. So apart from the supervisory orgs, the ones that are widely used are company, cost center, and region. In addition, org hierarchies will be defined and their purpose explored. Once you have created these structures may change over time. So there's a high possibility that you create an organization structure, right? So you have your top level organization, let's say McDonald's. Under McDonald's, you have your IT department, finance department, um, human resources, whatnot. So this hierarchy could change over a period of time. How would you change that? So once you have created your supervisory organizations, how do you manage changes? And we said, while in our introduction to Workday, that Workday is very agile in nature. It allows you to make changes very quickly. So there is this activity or a task called the reorganization. So the reorganization will allow you to restructure as your business changes, okay? So supervisory organizations, like I said, are the foundation to HCM. They group the worker into a management hierarchy. A supervisory organization can be a business unit, a department, group, or project. Jobs and positions and compensation are associated with supervisory orgs and the workers are hired into jobs or positions associated with the supervisory org. So what does that mean? So what that means is <clears throat> first thing you have to have in your tenant, in your workday tenant, before you even think about bringing in workers is that you have to have a supervisory org. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to create supervisory org. Once we have our supervisory org, this is where we want to hire our worker. 
you just cannot randomly bring in a worker from anywhere into workday there has to be a supervisory org defined that supervisory org the one that you have created the jobs and the positions and the compensation they are specifically tied to that supervisory org and then these jobs and positions that you created on these these are the ones where your worker will be hired and this is how indirectly your worker is related to the supervisory org right so you first thing to understand is you cannot have an orphan worker in the workday is it's just not possible that you can randomly bring in a worker into workday there has to be a supervisory org in which you want to hire a worker right so this is how that's a relationship between a supervisory org and a worker so you have a supervisory org the supervisory org has jobs and positions and in these jobs and positions is where the worker gets hired okay next next line says business process can be assigned to a supervisory org so what that means is i have multiple supervisory orgs i have a supervisory org for it department for human resources for finance and then all these supervisory orgs i could actually fine tune a business process for each of them let's say we have talked about hire right so hiring is a business process it could be a complicated business process could be a simple business process depends on the way you define it so workday gives you a default definition and says hey i have a default definition and i have these 20 steps before you actually hire somebody <clears throat> but what you could do is the hiring process in your organizations is different the way you hire in hr department is different than it department is different than finance department so you could actually assign a specific business process to a supervisory org we are also going to do that so don't worry about it but just wanted to make sure that you guys understand the concept that you can create a business process and fine tune it for your supervisory org okay so the image next page is an example of grouping of workers in a supervisory org so look at this <clears throat> i'm going to show you this in the tenant as well but just so you understand cuz it's simpler here so as you can see the top level organization here is global modern services and i think i did tell you guys this that the tenant that you have access to and any tenant for work your training is a gms tenant gms stands for global modern services so the tenant that you will have access to is a gms tenant so the top level organization is global modern services or GMS. Now, Steve Morgan is the CEO, Chief Executive Officer, based out in San Francisco, under Global Modern Services, and these are all supervisory orgs. These are all supervisory orgs, and these people you see, Steve Morgan and Rachel and Joy Max and Oliver and Logan McNeil and Betty Liu, they will always be same in any workday training tenant. Okay, so this is a an organization structure that work they gives you it's pre populated for your training needs so that you can understand things so no matter which training tenant you get you will always say, see these people okay so you have global modern services this is the top level supervisory organization under global modern services we see executive management group under executive management group we see finance and administration human resources information technology operations sales and marketing under human resources we have hr services department okay under hr services department we have the benefits department payroll department and recruiting department so as you can see what have we done here we have set up a hierarchy on the top is gms and then we have these other supervisory orgs see don't forget they are all supervisory orgs but they could be subordinate like it is subordinate to executive management when executive management group or executive management group is a superior supervisory org to information technology but they eventually they all are supervisory orgs okay so far so good everybody with me yes yeah okay awesome yes <clears throat> sounds good so what we understand is the tenant that you have is a gms tenant it's global modern services tenant 
global modern service, as you can see, this is a supervisory org. Under this supervisory org, we have other supervisory orgs. And what we are building here is a hierarchical structure. Okay. All right. So before we do this, let's get into the tenant. All right. So if you remember, this is your tenant. And uh, again, not sure you guys can see everything. I'm going to increase the zoom a little bit more. All right. Now we are logged in as this person. This person is, I forgot his name. Who are we logged in as? Ben Thomas. Now, before you do anything, first thing that you should do in your tenant, in your training tenant, and uh, this is because this person has better role. I would say always do a start proxy and log in as, act as Logan McNeil because Logan McNeil has more access logan mcneil shilpa one second welcome to you all right so we're doing a start proxy we are authenticated as ben thomas but i want you to act as logan mcneil so logan mcneil is again a super user in workday hit this and now you will be authenticated as ben thomas but you're acting as Logan McNeil. So you see the profile picture changes. All right, somebody raised their hand. Anybody has a question? All right. If not, moving on. I see some people raising hands. Okay, Venu, go for it. Hey. Yeah, uh, with regards to this proxy, mm -hmm. uh, is it the only uh, option available in training database or else is it something that uh, you will have in a production like you will security you will never have it. would be having you will never you will never you will never have it in production proxy is only enabled in training and in sandboxes you oh, okay. never have oh. you never have proxy access in production i have actually a, a 30 minute session just around proxy so i'll get to it okay all right Okay, so as you are in tenant, we have logged in as Logan McNeil. And now what I want to show you is, I want to show you the, again, the, the image that I showed you for the hierarchy. Let's search for it here. So I wanna go and search for human resources. So I'm looking for human resources supervisory org. Now again, you will see that there is plenty of human resources because this is a training tenant. A lot of people have access to it. So people are building their own. So I'm trying to look for the original one. No, that's not it. <clears throat> Let me see if I can find. Yeah, that should be it. Yeah. So what I search for, I search for the Global Modern Services Supervisory Org. So when this was set up, so as you can see, it's Global Modern Services in the um, braces. You could see it also contains the name of the person who's managing it. So that's the manager name, Steve Morgan, and the employee ID for that person, which is 21002. So as you can see this view right now, this is the view for the supervisory org, right? So view as of 01-11-2020, that's the organization ID, which you could use in integrations. And again, the type that says that this is a supervisory org, okay? It also shows you what are the subordinates to this supervisory org. And as you can see, it doesn't have a superior because if you remember, Global Modern Services is the top level supervisory org. So it doesn't have a superior, but it does have subordinates. So it has these subordinates. It has plenty of subordinates, but it's only showing you first five. Shilpa, yes, you have a question. Okay, I think there's some people there. Shilpa, I just enabled you to talk. Go for it. Yeah, 
Yeah, I just wanted to, I couldn't see my mic. So I just wanted okay. to know whether I'm audible for everyone because I didn't want it. Uh, yeah. I, can, so that, I can hear you now. Okay, no worries. Yeah, thank yeah you. I think you're... I think by default, uh, I didn't see your mic either. I just uh, had to go and uh, allow you to speak kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. All right, moving on. So as you can see, we have subordinate. So if you look at the structure, where did my structure go? You go back here. If you go back to the structure, we have the global modern services. Now, global modern services is the top level supervisory org. It doesn't have a superior supervisory org. There's nothing on top of it, but it has plenty of subordinates. So the, the direct subordinate to global modern services is executive management group. So if you go back here, you will see global modern services does have executive management group and several other that people have created. I want to see that org chart and how do I see that? So before I get there, as you can see, there's plenty of tabs here. Okay. Let's look at some of these. So you, you are at the view of, um, hold on a second. There's too much background. So as you can see, there are plenty of tabs. There's members, there's details, there's staffing, there's unavailable to fill, there's roles, security groups, compensation, organization assignment, goals, and additional data. The first tab, which you are on by default, says members. How do these members get here? So these members, as you can see, there's Angela, Ava, GLAS, Kim, Mukesh, and Steve. So all these people were added into this supervisory org. How were they added to the supervisory org? They were added to the supervisory org by getting hired in here. So like I said before, any worker that you see in Workday has to be tied to a supervisory org because otherwise, how would you get them into a hierarchy? So these workers or these members that you see, they are actually hired into Global Modern Services. And how were they actually hired? they were hired based on what your staffing is like. So the staffing, and we will get into the staffing models. This is a position management organization. What that means is that before you hire any worker into this supervisory or global modern services, you have to have open positions. So as you can see, there are these positions and these people, all these workers, they were hired into these positions. So global modern services had positions created and you hire these people in these positions. That is, that is how these workers show up here. So eventually, so what that means is the first time when you create a supervisory org, your supervisory org will not have any members. How do you get members? You actually hire people into your supervisory org to get these members into work there. Okay, how do we see that org chart? Now, as you can see, like I said before, that anywhere you actually take your mouse to, right? You hover over there and you see these three ellipses. These are all related action menus. I can get to them or you can click on this action right here and this also pops up a related action menu. I think some people have questions. Let me answer them and then we get back. Rosie, go ahead. Hi, Ricky. I know you mentioned that um, Global Modern Services is the you know, top most in the hierarchy. Mm -hmm. Let's say when there's a merger and you really want to add something superior to that or merges into something, how do you go about that process? Yep, yep. I'll get to it. You have a lab around it and because you asked- Okay, great. Me. Thank yep. you. Uh, Pami, you have a question. Uh, Ricky, can you just explain uh, that uh, you have just explained where like Angela Markle was there. So uh, just mm -hmm. explain how the, uh, that lady came here. So can you explain sure. that one? Okay, absolutely. All right, so how these people show up here? And again, you will do it yourself. These are your, your lab exercises as well. So how do these people show up here, right? So we are looking at global modern services. I'm gonna go a couple of levels down actually. So let's make it a little more clear. All right, so now we are at one level down and we are at executive management group, which has a superior of global modern services, which is top level and executive management group has subordinates showing you only first five. So all these, you see these supervisory orgs. Now, if you go to a supervisory org, when it was created initially, 
this supervisory org did not have any member. Okay. Think of it that this is all blank. There's nothing under the worker position form. There was nothing in here. Now, how do these workers show up here? How do I get these people into work there? For example, your company was using some other HCM system. Let's say they were using SAP Success Factor or PeopleSoft, or you want to bring in the workers from Salesforce into work there. Right? So what do you need to do first is, first of all, you should have a supervisory org, which you do. What else do you need? Now, based on what kind of organization it is, in this case, this is a position organization. So you have to create position. So let's say in my executive management group, what do I need? I need executive assistant. I need information officer. I need data officer. I need HR officer. So I create these positions. Once I have these positions created, what I will do is I will do something called hire employee and then I will hire employee and the hire employee business process when it kicks in, it asks the person who's hiring that, okay, you want to hire, where do you want to hire? And you will say, I want to hire an executive management group. And they say, okay, executive management group is a position organization. Have you created a position? Which position you want to hire in? And you will say, I want to hire an executive assistant. Okay. And, and then, on your executive assistant, and then you will pick up your person, Olivia Price, and that's how you will hire Olivia Price into the executive assistant position, which is tied to executive management group. And that's how Olivia Price would show up here. Similarly, all of these workers that you see, they are all here. Yes, Pami. Ricky, uh, I just had a question. Like, suppose uh, you know, nowadays uh, the companies always change their position, like uh, uh, um, levels of the organization. So suddenly it came to me that okay, the, the director level position is opening, mm -hmm. and I have not created uh, in the supervisory organization. I have not created that director position. So then mm -hmm. I have to create that position. In that is correct. That is correct. So once I get to the uh, staffing models, you will see your organization could be a position management organization or a job management. In case of a, if your organization is a position management organization, you have to have an open position before you start hiring anybody into that. So if, if you want to hire a director, you better have a director position because eventually when you will get to hire employee into the supervisory org and you don't have a position, Workday will not let you hire a person without an open position. Okay. okay. So you have to have an open position. Oh, wow. There's a lot of questions. All right. Uh, let's go with uh, Pradeep. What's your question? Um, hi, Ricky. My question is, uh, you know, related to the previous one. So mm -hmm. we created the position and I see mm -hmm. some members. So where do the members come in from? Okay. I, I think I did mention the point. The members come into work day by hiring. So you have to perform a task like hire employee or contract a contingent worker. That's how these members show up in your supervisory org. You have to run specific tasks. So, okay. Yeah. Initially your organization. Okay. Actually, you know what? All right. Anybody. So, okay. Let, let me take all these questions. Any other question on this Pradeep? I'll show you that in a minute. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. So you can take the next one. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Shilpa. Yeah. Hi. Uh, so here we have a position management uh, staffing model, but mm -hmm. do we require to first uh, have a job requisition for that particular position? Like not how necessary. it goes in? Not necessary. Not necessary. No. Okay. So you, you could have a job rec tied to a position or you could have a job, uh, a position without a job rec. Okay. Both the options so are available. Yeah, means in normal company, uh, like mm -hmm. in HR department, first job requisitions comes and then mm -hmm. they open the positions. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's not like that here. It's not mandatory in Workday. You could you could actually enforce it, but it's not enforced in here, okay. at, at least in your trend. So as you can see, positions with open job requisition. Okay. Okay. So you have a requisition and there is a position without job requisition as well. So you could have both kind of a mix. Yeah, so it's not a mandatory. It's not so, a mandatory. So, the, yeah, these are right here. Got it. Thank you. No worries. Rosie. I'm so sorry. That was a very no mistake. Okay. <laughs> no problem at all. 
All right, sounds good. So, okay, I'm gonna clarify this a little. I, I, I was supposed to do that and I'm going to do that, but you guys jumped onto the questions, so let's take it. So, as you can see, there's plenty of questions. How do these members actually land up here and about the staffing model? But before I get there, let's take a few steps. So if I go to the executive management group and you see actions, that is the, and you click on the actions, it shows up the related action menu, okay? The related action menu has all the things that you need or the actions that you can take on the supervisory org, okay? As you can see, on this executive management group, hire you could hire an employee right you want to do a job change you could do a job change you can move the workers and oh, hold on. terminating of an employee ending of the job creating blah 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 add a job start national assignment so there's a lot of things that you can do so what we were talking about we were talking about reorganization can i assign a superior and can i create a subordinate so let's do this by creating a subordinate so we are at the executive management group, right? Executive management group has a superior organization, which is also supervisory global modern services. Let's look at the uh, org chart. Let's look at the org chart. Go to the related action menu, and when you will get there to the related action menu, you will see the option to see the org chart. And on the org chart, you can see that you're on the executive management group, on top of executive management group is our global modern services, okay? So global modern services, under global modern services is executive management group, and it has plenty other subordinates that people have created, and I'm gonna create one here as well, okay? Go back to executive management group. All right, as you can see, you can just go off from one place to another without changing your screen. All right, so details show you the view as of, the type, the organization ID, the superior and the subordinate. Now I want to create my own subordinate supervisory org under executive management group. So what would I do is go to the related action menu, scroll, scroll, reorganization, create subordinate. All right, now, it says create subordinate. The organization is this, the effective date is this. Hit okay. Now the superior is executive management group. It automatically populates that because you are running off of it. You were on the executive management group. You, did, you went to the actions and you said, I want to create a subordinate. And when you're creating a subordinate, automatically it becomes a superior. Okay, availability date. Now you got to give the name of the supervisory org that you are creating. So I'm going to call it as, let's say, Ricky, today is 11-1, okay? Include organization ID in name. Workday will automatically populate an ID. Do you want it? No, I don't. I can actually provide an organization code. I can call it as RCK. Do you want to include the organization code in the name? Let's do that. Include the manager or leader in name. Let's do that. Organization subtype. Like I said, there could be a department, a division, or a group. And let's say it's a department. External URL or primary location. Let's not populate this. Anything that has a star is a mandatory field. Everything else is non-mandatory. And I hit submit. All right. Now you can see process completed successfully. What does it mean? Process completed successfully means that this also is a business process. Creating a subordinate, creating a superior, or all these um, actions, they are a business process in itself. And why are they there? They are there to place a check. Now you're doing this as a super user. If this is not a super user, and you are a regular person in your organization, and you wanted to create a supervisory org, it would go out for an approval. Hey that this person just created a supervisory org and it goes out to your superior person and says, do you approve this? So there are steps involved in these processes, but because of the fact we are in, in training mode and we are working as Logan McNeil, you don't see all those things. But in actuality, in, in the real world, it will go out as for a approval. 
So if you click on the details and processes, you could see for executive management group, overall processes, create, subordinate, RCK. I, we added the code, Ricky, department, Steve Morgan. And then we wanted a manager, but it says inherited. And we will see what that means. Overall status is successfully completed. And this is, this is it, okay? So it's done. Process, processes create subordinate, step completed, and this person completed it on this given date and time, right? Done. All right, now my executive management group, oh, okay, hold on, hold on. I see hands raised, hold on a second. Now, as you can see in my subordinates, you can see that RCK Ricky shows up. Okay, so what I did was I went to the executive management group, went to the related action menu and created subordinate. And when I created subordinate, and there's plenty of subordinates, under first five subordinates, I see the subordinate that I created. I'm gonna click on this. All right, I went to my RCK Ricky underscore 11 underscore one department, Steve Morgan 21002 inherited. So this Steve Morgan, Two one zero zero two. Why does this show up here? Think about that. In the meantime, as you can see, this in my view as of the type is supervisory. That's the organization ID, and it shows what is the superior organization to this one. And I haven't created any subordinates under this, so there's no subordinates. It only has a superior members people are asking like members how do they show up as you can see this is a brand new supervisory org has zero members there is no members in the supervisory org right you click on the details so it will show you the details of the supervisory org the availability date the type the subtype the code the visibility is visible to everyone the top level organization is global modern services the superior is executive management group and it has a location. I did not provide that location while I was creating it. How did it get it? It got it by inheritance. So location got inherited from the superior and the superior was executive management group. So executive management group had a location of San Francisco and so did this Ricky 11 department got it. So the location got inherited, all right? What else? The staffing. The staffing model. I did not specify a staffing model. How did I get position management? I got position management because my superior organization, executive management group, was a position management organization. So the staffing model got inherited. All right. And look at these roles. These are assignable roles, roles that you can assign in your organization. Let's say I'm going to look at who's the manager of this thing. Who's the manager in my supervisory org? So I'm scrolling down. I will take the questions. Hold on. All right. Manager and the manager of this organization is Steve Morgan. How did I get that? This is also inherited. So you saw a couple of things that we inherited from our superior supervisory org. We inherited the primary location. We inherited who is the manager and we inherited our staffing model. If we do not specifically specify it. Inheritance does not mean that we cannot change it. We can obviously change it and we will do that next, but this is what inheritance did. So inheritance allowed us to copy a couple of things. Inheritance allowed us to get the staffing model and the roles. All right, let's take some questions. All right, Bindu, let's go with you first. Uh, thank you. Um, so my question was, when you created this department, um, it said the process was completed when you finish and submitted mm -hmm. the uh, uh, you know, information. But then in real time, you said that it usually goes for an approval, all right? Mm -hmm. 
Right. Um, so, uh, is there another set of, you know, uh, so what, what's the workflow for that? Like, how is that created? Like, is it by default goes to the superior organization for approval or the, the, the approval process needs to be set up separately? So the way it works is, so <clears throat> I, I use the term business process. So, so this approval flow, we, we could call it approval flow in different systems. Here it is called a business process. A business process defines what has to happen in, in a given scenario or in a given situation. So let's say, for example, let's look at BP create, um, create position. All right, so these are business process definitions and I'm specifically looking for creating a position. Okay, so you want to create a position for a supervisory or for example, that's what you want to do. When you want to create a position, right? So what would you do? You will say, I want to create a position for the supervisory org that I just created. In this case, it's a simple, there's only one step, which is initiation. And this doesn't help me explain what I want to show you. Let me go back. Let me pick up something. If somebody has a tricky one. All right, there you go. So let's look at this one. So this is creating a position, right? So you want to create a position for a given supervisory org. There's a step, which is initiation, which is always there. And then there is some approval action happening. So in this case, who is going to provide an approval is the HR partner. So whoever is the HR partner in your supervisory org is going to get that notification that, hey, this person has done this. Do you approve it or deny it? So, and then based on, again, there's another action, review the position. So the business process step decides who takes that action. Does it answer your question, Mindu? Yes. So you use, you set up this thing when uh, you're working or when you're creating a position where you add the position. Before, and then before creating a position, before creating okay. a position. So, right. so the business, business processes have to be defined before you actually take an action. So before I'm about to hire anybody into my supervisory or I want to make sure that what are the steps in my, in my hire business process? If I'm creating a position, I want to make sure what are the steps in my hiring business process or in my creating a position business process. So the business processes have to be set up first before you actually take those actions, whether you're hiring, creating a position, creating uh, these organizations, creating subordinates, all these have to happen before that. Okay. Yep. Sure. Thank you. Makes sense. Okay. Sure. Okay. Ashka. Okay. Uh, hey, Vicky. So the subordinate supervisory org, which we just created, mm -hmm. inherited its staffing model uh, from the supervisory org, right? Mm -hmm. So what if we want to change and we don't want to inherit in, yep. I mean, we don't want to take it from the supervisory org. So in that we case, can we, mm -hmm. okay. yes, we can okay. change. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so the, the, so the, my question is in that case, we'll have to change the staffing model first before hiring a person. Correct. Absolutely. Correct. Yes. If you are, if you do not, so again, probably you just referenced your superior supervisor. I just want to create underneath it, but I want to change the staffing model. I want to change the jobs and positions. I don't want to have, a, I want to have a different manager. You would change all that. But the first thing, like you mentioned, you have to change your staffing model. Okay. So yes. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. Okay. Uh, Shilpa. Yeah. My question was similar to Bindu. Uh, and I, I got that answer. Okay. But um, again, like, so each, uh, if create, before creating any supervisor organization, uh, we have to set up a business process. So can we use uh, a earlier business process? If, if for suppose mm -hmm. we have a, you know, some same type of business process earlier uh, there, so we can use it again, or we have to uh, create you don't business have, process no, every you don't. time? No, no, no. Okay. So let me, let me take 10 minutes to explain that. Where is my... Where is my, give me a second. 
All right. I'm going to take two minutes to explain this thing. All right. So what happens Thank is, you. We're, no worries. So we're talking about business processes a lot, right? So, and I expected that. So the, the thing business processes, I'm going to call this BP. So the, the business processes are provided to you by Workday. Okay. Workday does provide you all business processes provided by Workday. Okay. okay. You cannot create a business process from scratch. You just cannot work. This says work that does not allow you to create a business process. Let's say you have some combination of steps. You say, you know, this happens, that happens. And I want to combine them and create a business process. Work that says, no, 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 no. We have already created a business process. What do you want to do? And you say, oh, actually, you know what? I want to hire somebody. I want to create positions. And work that says, we are giving you the definitions. So what work that does is work that gives you, they call it as default definition. Okay. It gives you default definition. Okay. So Workday gives you default definition. A default definition could contain one or like I would say 50 steps. Okay. So now these steps are unique steps and they're all combined together. That's what makes it a, a business process. Now for you, let's say what you're doing is you're doing a higher employee. Okay. So for hiring, Workday gives you 50 steps and then you don't want those 50 steps. You only want few. So what you could do is you could actually fine tune your business process and have only three steps in your business process. And what you could do is you could take these three steps and assign it to your supervisory org. Okay. And again, in this case, let's say this was Ricky 11 or one or whatever. So this supervisory org, and I can say, you know what, this higher business process, I'm going to assign to this because if I'm hiring in this supervisory org, I will use, these three steps only. I, I don't need 50 steps. And again, you could do the same thing. You could say, I have another supervisory or let's call it as Tom. Let's call it as Tom's supervisory. And you could say, I want to use the same business process. So you could do the same thing. You could pick up the same business process with the three steps and you could assign it to this as well. However, there's another supervisory or let's call it as HR. And in HR, because you say, you know what? I really want to be strict and be complicated. You could take the default definition provided by Workday and assign it to the HR. So in all of these cases, you did not create a business process from scratch. You took the default definition, you modified that definition and you made it your own. Now, once it has been created, you can continuously just keep applying the same business process to your organization. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Does it? Okay. Anybody? Okay. Anybody has a related question on this first? All right. If okay. Rosie, what's your question? So, both both um both uh, my questions are related to the lab. Um, when when you're trying to look for the manager, when you you, you kind of went into the details and you looked for the manager and you were scrolling down, mm -hmm. is there mm -hmm. a better way to find that? Because when we are logging yes. in as a host, it's a little cumbersome for us. That was one. And the other one is you know, when you're looking for certain organizations to test run, you're sussing mm -hmm. out certain um, things created by other students. How do we, mm -hmm. um, so those two, some clarification will be helpful. Yep, sure. First thing. Um, so when you're scrolling, I'll show you that in a second. How do you actually filter that data? And the second thing is to so look for something because it's a training tenant. People have actually a lot of stuff going on in there. Look for something which has, so there are some default supervisory orgs provided to you by Workday. First of all, it's the global modern services and then executive management group and look for the people's name like um, Steve Morgan, so owned by Steve Morgan. Same thing with this one, Steve Morgan. And then under executive management group, you have your IT. Look for um, owned by Workday, which is um, Logan McNeil. Okay, so Logan McNeil should be the manager. Or the other one is Joy Banks. So look for these names. So these names are Workday provided standard uh, workers who have the authority. So look for these IT IT uh, help desk or human resources or executive management group and GMS. So that's how you should go about it. And as far as the other question was, go back. Let's go back to the tenant. And I'm going to go to Ricky. Uh, 
All right, and there were plenty of roles. Click on assignable role, filter condition. All right, you can just come here, click on it, shows up a filter menu and you filter it. That's it, Rosie. Yep, this is definitely going to be a time saver. Thank you. Sure, no worries. Okay, I have more questions. All right, Venu and Ramakrishna. Venu, question? Yeah. Yeah, with regards to supervisory organization, can we? even divide the role. So let's suppose uh, we do have 120 managers in an organization. So do we need to go and create 120 or supervisory organizations or else uh, can we even divide and give that uh, uh, subordinate this access? Uh, the access of a manager to various organizations to the same person, is that your question? Yes, exactly. Yeah, you could. The same person, like for example, Logan McNeil, she could manage 20 other supervisory orgs. Yes, you could assign the same person to multiple supervisory orgs as a manager. So that's, that's doable. Uh, yeah, so in this case, let's mm -hmm. suppose an organization has 200. Let's suppose if we take into organization, there could be uh, 200 plus managers. So for each and every manager, do we need to create a supervisory organization? So in one organization, you are saying 200 managers in one supervisory org? Yes. Not one, because each and every manager, we need to create a supervisory organization because there will be uh, employees who would be reporting technically. So when a supervisor organization in a workday is nothing but a manager with, its, with his subordinates. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? So I think you're... you're you're explaining it backwards to me. So what you're saying is there is managers and managers have supervisory orgs. Rather, it's the other way. It's the supervisory org, which has a manager who's managing it. And all these other yes. people. Yeah. So let's say we are an executive management group. Okay. So executive management group has these members, right? These members and the manager, it's not necessary. And again, I think it's a point. It's a, it's a choice. The, do you want the manager to be at the same level as your worker, so, uh, which is not right. So, it, so the suggestive way of doing this is that the manager should be at least one level up of executive management group. So the, ma the person who's managing this should be at least one level up hired. So Steve Morgan is not hired in executive management, management group. As you can see, he's not hired in here. He is hired one level up, which is at Global Modern Services. So the manager of this supervisory org is Steve Morgan and he's managing this supervisory org. That means he's managing these seven members, right? So it's not that the managers have the supervisory org. It's the supervisory org which has a manager. Yes, exactly. So yeah. let's suppose we have 200 depart departments in an organization. So similarly, let's suppose we have sales it and so there could be in an operations uh, team uh, in a company where there could be even n number of uh, groups like it yeah. could be based on the company's name so for each and every division mm -hmm. can you have to create a supervisory organization let's suppose correct, there is a manager correct, correct, correct. and yes. there could be uh, there could be a manager and underneath him, there could be one more assistant manager and underneath him, there could be leads and underneath him, there could be people who would be reporting to him. Yep. Yep. As you can see that when we created the subordinate, we created as of a type department, you could go deeper and deeper and deeper. And yes, you could have managers at each, at each level. You could do that. Okay. Yeah. Can we create or give the access of a manager to a reportee. Mm. Explain that to me. So let's suppose I'm a manager and the uh, uh, next person is an employee underneath me. So oh. can I give my access or the privileges that I have 
to a person of x provided restricted no. access you like, could like, you could do some I, kind of a delegation you could do some kinds of delegation but you cannot give all the access or all the roles you cannot do that you could so let's say you, there are some approvals that come to you for could be expense reports could be vacation time offs you could delegate some of it but your access complete access no because see the way security would work and you will see when we talk about security that once you once you assign a person to a specific security group you can you cannot share it with somebody else if somebody else wants same security as you that person has to be added to the same security groups as you are you cannot share your security with somebody else what you could do is you could delegate some of your tasks but that's separate okay so, okay and uh, one more can we create uh, let's suppose an employee at a uh, duplicate so let's suppose venu one let's suppose i am maintaining both uh, marketing and it so mm -hmm. do can i create both supervisory organization with uh, venu it and venu hr so again i think you're going backwards on this too so what you're doing is you are again going with the worker and then talking about supervisory orgs what you should be saying is that you have two supervisory orgs one of it and one of one of marketing for example can you have venu working for both or pointing to both is that what your question is exactly yes you could uh, yes that kind of a setup is called a matrix organization that is doable okay thank you sure Whew. All right, Ram Krishna. Ram, you have a question? Yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry, uh, I have a similar kind of question. What Venu asked. So uh, there is a restricted access where we can give it. For example, if in absence, uh, for example, I'm going on a leave for a month, and uh, you know, absence has to be continued, and it has to be taken over, or it has to be delegated. So mm -hmm. such kind of uh, uh, you know access can be granted to your subordinates, uh, so that this this should be on, and uh, there should not be delay in terms of you know operating yeah. those critical tasks. Right, delegation is there. Yes. Okay. So what kind of uh, delegation is not possible? Could you please give me an example so that I actually you know what I think I could I will do that, but you guys are way ahead of what what this where this class is going. Um, okay. Yeah. So once we get to security and delegations, I would certainly specify, but again, because you asked, so some of the delegations are, you could assign, like say the leave vacations, the bat, right? You want to approve the leaves of vacations. You want to apply, um, approve expense reports. So you could make these kind of tasks as delegated tasks. But again, security and delegation are two separate things. Security involves that you have the authority to run specific kind of reports, which include looking at people's social security numbers, looking at their pay stubs. So if you give this access, your security to a subordinate, right? And you go away on vacation. Now the subordinate, because there was a way for you to give your security to this person, this person can now see everybody's pay stubs, including you. So that is why, because it's HCM is a very sensitive system. It contains personal contact information, your social security numbers, your passports, your everything. If you give your security access, let's say we are still talking about a manager. Let's say the HR administrator wants to do that. An HR administrator gives away his security clearance if there is a way to do that, but which is not. If they want to give away their security clearance to their subordinate, right? And then the subordinate looks at, and this person comes out, this person has already seen everybody's information. An HR administrator has the authority to look at the employee data all across the organization, their personal information, their social security information, their healthcare benefits, because HCM system is connected to everything, right? So right. Th there are some reports that an HR administrator or a benefit partner can run, which nobody else should be able to execute. That is why security is a very, very complicated topic in Workday and the way it is established. So it's not possible to, I understand that you come from SAP or some other different systems, you create roles and you say, okay, it's just a matter of assigning a role to somebody. It works a little differently in Workday. It's not how uh, it, it works like any other software system. So delegation, security, two separate tasks. Uh, one more thing attached to, mm -hmm. to that probably is uh, any kind of a delegation uh, requires an approvals uh, uh, from the uh, you know top
top management or do you have you know our immediate uh, manager can approve that for example if any delegation kind of thing if if happening it then. also it also depends on a business process so when the business processes are defined or when they are being set up when the organization is being set up you define these business processes and the tenant set up so in the tenant set up when you are defining these delegations you specify when i want to delegate from this from this person to that person or from from uh, specific supervisory orgs what needs to happen what is the approval flow should it go to for example hr administrator for approval should it go to the to, to to the manager's manager or where should it go so that is also defined in the tenant setup when it's being oh, okay. done and we can also set up the dates from when to when he we can delegate yes. it right yes okay. you could Yep. So, how the matrix uh, manager, uh, for Stop. example, if I'm... Stop, Ram. Stop. We are way ahead. Hold on. We'll get there, guys. You, sure, sure. I have. Sure, sure. All right. Fine. Yeah. Okay. All right, Rosie. So, um, is it safe to assume, Ricky, that um, organizations, are, I mean, work to accommodate structures like functional, divisional, matrix, and flat, um, mm -hmm. and then the processes as a um, you know, um, as a um, person in the organization can customize. Does Workday accommodate those different types of structures in the form of superior org and in the processes it does. Is it inbuilt? It does. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. All right. So it's 10 Eastern. Let's take a quick five minute break and we reconvene at 10, five Eastern, six minutes. All right, so we've had several questions, uh, some on the topic, some beyond the topic. So let's go back to the topic and then we move along. So there are four key characteristics unique to a supervisory org that are covered in this course. First thing that you have to understand, the positions are only created within a supervisory org. When I say I want to create position for a given staffing model, that means that the positions are only created for a supervisory or you cannot have random positions lying around in workday right you, there's no concept of a position without a supervisory org so you have to tie the positions to a supervisory org employees must be hired into a supervisory org you cannot have random employees in a supervisory org again so the con the idea is have the supervisory org then have the staffing model, staffing model decide job or position, create a position, and then hire the employee onto that position. Assignable roles have responsibilities within a supervisory org. You saw one of those, which is manager. So if you are a part of a supervisory org where there's a specific manager, any kind of approvals that you need, for example, your expense reports or your time off, they would go to your manager so it's important that you have the right manager assigned to your supervisory org unique business processes can be assigned to a supervisory org like i was mentioning that you could have a business process tied to a specific supervisory org you could have a higher business process which only has three steps tied to your supervisory org however you know the default definition has 50 steps so a unique business process can be assigned to a supervisory org Characteristics of a supervisory org. The supervisory org can have organization subtypes we've seen like division or department. You define each organization subtype using maintain organization subtypes task. You can have more of these organization subtypes. You can enforce the hierarchy of your organization. If you have three org subtypes like department, division, team, department is superior to division division is superior to team you can enforce this so no one creates a team that is superior to department so you could enforce that use related action of the organization navigate to hierarchy structure and the create task and then enforce the task to not allow future changes so there is there are activities to create a supervisor first thing is we view a supervisory org so that's what we did you go to the human resources in the box and select the human resource supervisory organization what is the supervisory org what are its subordinates who are the members and what is the primary location so just answer these questions so the idea is that you go around uh, learn to maneuver workday start searching for things 
Now create a subordinate supervisory organization. Okay, go to your human resources, do a right click on it and go to the reorganization, create subordinate, give it a name, give it a code, give it a division, submit and done. So this is how I created a subordinate supervisory org. All right, so let's talk about assignable roles. So we have been um, talking about that. Yeah, there has there is a manager. There's plenty of uh, plenty of roles available for an for a manager. What is the concept of an assignable role? The concept of assignable role is assignable roles are in each type of organization. Roles are being used in business processes to assign the task. They can either be inherited from a superior org or can be defaulted. So what you're seeing is we created a subordinate supervisory org under executive management group and it inherited the roles okay now what we can do is they are inherited but what i'm going to do is i'm going to assign them depending on your security roles can be assigned on an organization using the related action roles assign roles or directly from a worker using the assign role task in the workers related action security profile menu too much jargon let's go back into the tenant so what it means is i'm going to go back to my org so we're going to deal with staffing as well so for now understand that the staffing model is position management and it is position management because the supervisory organization was position management so it got inherited now in my roles i'm specifically looking for manager Okay, and there are plenty of roles, but I'm looking for manager. And let's go to my manager. So if you see the manager, manager is Steve Morgan, and this is inherited. I do not want Steve Morgan to manage this. Let's say I want Logan McNeil to manage this one. Okay, now how do I do that? I could do that from the related action menu of my supervisory org. So I can go to the actions. Go to roles and assign roles. Okay. Related action menu, roles, assign roles. This is one way of doing this. Let's go hit OK, assign roles. And it's going to ask you, role, what do you want to do? So I'm going to do manager. Okay, and assigned to, let's say, Logan McNeil, right? Hit okay. Done. Let's search again. All right, now you can see it has been assigned to Logan McNeil. It was Steve Morgan before, but I assigned Logan McNeil and it is assigned. It's not inherited anymore. Now it's Logan McNeil. Other way of doing this is, and let's say I switch it back. I switch it back to Steve Morgan. And how do I do that for practice? Go back to action menu again, no related actions, roles, assign roles. and change it assign to steve morgan okay done search for it Okay, back to Steve Morgan. So when I was going through the slide, it says there are two ways of doing this. The 
two ways of assigning the roles role can be assigned on an organization using the related action role assign roles or directly from a worker using the assigned role task in the workers related action security profile menu so what that means is you got to go to that workers profile if i want to assign logan mcneil the role of manager i will go to logan mcneil's profile okay so i will go to logan mcneil's profile i go to her actions Oh, somebody has messed up the tenant. Let me see what's going on. This are doing a request to calculate the field job profile, for instance, blah, blah, blah. It's not letting me do that. So somebody has messed up. Okay, let me do it somebody else. Okay, I'm going to go to tell you another worker all right okay security profile assigned role so let's say we are assigning it to betty liu so we go to assigned roles of betty liu hit okay And I'm gonna make her so role enabled for. That's my supervisory org role. Which role? Say manager assigned to Betty. Oops. Assigned to Steve. I'm gonna change it from Steve to. Betty Liu, submit. Done. Go back. You can see already the name is Betty Liu now because that's some, she's the manager. Go to roles. Sign up a roles. Uh, right, so she's Betty Liu now. And again, this is also a sign. So two ways of assigning the roles. You can go to the related action menu of the supervisory org actions roles assign roles or you can go to the worker search for that worker and from that worker security profile menu you go and you assign the role so two ways of doing that okay so that's what we did depending on our security the role inheritance in supervisory can org yes okay. sorry uh, can we even change the name of the supervisory org Yes, you can. You can edit the supervisory arc. Can we even delete it? You cannot delete a supervisory arc once it's created. You can inactivate it, but you cannot delete it. Okay, thank you. Sure. All right, so in supervisory arcs, the roles are assigned to a position. Okay, if using position management staffing model or a job, if using job management staffing model, worker who accepts that position or job accepts the role and their name is displayed in the assigned to field. Okay, so the point to, to notice in a supervisory org, the roles, they are assigned to a position. It's not to a person. The roles are assigned to a position like HR administrator or a benefit partner. The person who takes that position, their name shows up 
Okay, if it's a job, it's using a job manager staffing model. So worker who accepts that position or job accepts the role and their name is displayed in the assigned to field. If a position is unfilled, the assigned to field will display the position title. So I showed you this in, in the tenant. Okay, I'm gonna come back to this later. Okay, so workers and managers in supervisory org. A worker can only be hired in one supervisory org. If I have hired a worker, right? I've hired a worker in IT department, I've hired him. I cannot rehire that person in a, another supervisory org, but that person can point to another organization. Like there was this question before that I am a part of IT department and marketing both. How would I, how would I do that? You would use an organization setup called matrix assignment, then you could do that. But again, the point is that once a worker is hired, that person is hired. There is no rehiring of that worker in a separate supervisory org. You can obviously rehire, but the person has to be terminated. That position has to be vacated. And then we rehire that person into a separate, separate supervisory or in a different position. Once a, a worker is hired, they become a member of the supervisory org. We saw that, that once when we hire somebody, our members are initially blank. We don't have any members in our supervisory org. So what we got to do is we got to make sure we hire a person, we hire a worker, in our supervisory org and that's how they become a member of our supervisory organization. Second statement that I'm going to make, it's not mandatory. It's a best practice. And I was talking to some folks at work day about it. And again, um, they just don't enforce it. So the line says a manager of the supervisory organization is hired into the superior supervisory organization to the one that he or she manages. So, if I have a person who is a manager, that manager ideally should not be hired on the same level as the worker. So if I'm the manager of the IT department, I should have been hired one level up, right? At least in the executive management group, not the CEO level, but at least in one level up, right? I should not have the same level as, my, as the people who report to me. Right? Because it creates complications on the security front. Right? So you should have the manager being hired at least one level up. A manager of the supervisory org is hired into the supervisory, superior supervisory org to the one that he or she manages. This is not mandated in workday. You could still do that. Because for example, there are seven people in a, in a given supervisory org and you want to promote one of them. You could do that. Right, that person was not um, actually. They all seven were in the same team, and you promote one person. So yes, this is quite uh, possible and usual. It happens. The manager is never a member of the supervisory org that he or she manages. Right, again, same thing. The manager has to be hired one level up. Not has to, but should be. Best practice: security concern. Managing changes to the supervisory org is very normal. This is how you do it. I have shown you this in action. You go to the related action menu, go to the reorganization, assign a superior, create a subordinate, inactivate the organization. Somebody was asking, can I delete the organization? You cannot. You can inactivate the organization. One second, guys. I see hands raised. All right. So labs, you will create subordinate supervisory orgs continue building the wealth of knowledge structure and creates two subordinate supervisory orgs called course development and training. And then there is a company organization, create cost center hierarchy. Okay, let's get to this in the next class. Yeah, we're crossing this and getting into staffing models. Okay, I'll take questions. Let me see. All right, Shilpa, go for it. Shilpa, you're on so mute. we yeah yeah, yeah. Um, mm. I'm here okay mm -hmm. thank you um, so we will create so like you just said manager should be um, hired it should be under sub superior sub uh, supervisory org correct mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh, when uh, at the time of implementation it will be decided which are the which are the hierarchy what is the hierarchy of uh, supervisory org or how Oh, we will decide which one is a superior supervisory org. That is uh, correct. 
for that when particular the, yeah. domain. Yeah. When the tenant is being implemented, these are all business questions that the business answers. Um, so again, uh-huh. there are impl- implementation consultants. Implementation consultants work with the business and the business defines that, hey, this is how our hierarchy or our org setup should look like. And again, the mm-hmm. implementation people implement the tenant that way. So they create these supervisory orgs. They, they um, create them in bulk and then they hire the people in bulk using EIBs and migration tools. And then they populate all this. And it's not unseen that uh, once these things are done, people say, oh, you know what? Actually, this is wrong. I have hired, actually accidentally hired all my people into wrong supervisory orgs. And that's when you have to do different EIBs. Or if it's only one or two people, you move them workers from one organization to another. Those are also reorganization tasks. So yeah, these decisions okay. are taken when the tenant is being implemented. Okay. Thank you, Ricky. Sure. sure. Rama. Rama, you have a question? Yeah, no question, sorry. Oh, no worries. Okay, so you guys will do your labs. So before, so you have some labs where you will actually create a supervisory org. Um, I showed that you will actually maneuver your, your human resources thing. You will create a subordinate supervisory org and you will assign the manager role. You will create subordinate supervisory organizations. You will create two organizations course development and the other one, which is the training. And then one thing I want to make sure that you guys understand is these labs that you're going to do, they are built on top of each other. So by the time you get to the point where you are about to hire somebody, you should have set up all your labs previously because all these labs are interconnected. By the time you get to hire, your organization should be set up, your Staffing model should be set up. Your positions should be created. Your compensation should be ready. That's when you will be able to hire. If you have not done the previous work, you will have a tough time actually doing the right set of hiring. So make sure that you follow up on your lab work. Um, I saw a question um, by Kesa Wilson uh, that guys, make sure that you all have allocated time. You all will reserve your own time for going into the tenant, doing your lab work. Please do not step onto each other's shoes. So only log into your tenant to your work when it is your time. Do not log into the tenant when it is not your time because what it does is it kicks out the other person who was actually in the tenant doing their work. So you have your assigned practice time. So do just only take your time. Don't take somebody else's time. Yeah, question. Somebody has a question. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, last no question. So. With regards, uh, with regards to the access that uh, you are, uh, you mm-hmm. have done uh, with regards to the roles and responsibilities, you have changed from X person to Y person. Mm-hmm. So, uh, in, in in the previous task. So, yeah. with regards to that, uh, so being this a uh, tenant, I mean, learning tenant, it has a pro- I mean, it was easier for you to without any approvals, you were able to do. But in case of a real time. Mm-hmm. So does it uh, require any approvals for that to change or else in case if uh, you're going to change any names or edit a supervisor organization, is it possible to do that? So million dollar question. So what happens is actually, if you are a part, so there are different users. So there's a user called WD dash implementer. That user is used by implementers who are implementing the tenant, like who are setting up the tenant. So that's the, that's the user, the use. Now that user is a part of special security groups that allows it to actually do all the stuff that it's supposed to do. Now, if you're maintaining, if you're providing help to the people, let's say your, your problem is that you want to change the name of an organization, you want to set up some delegation, you want to see uh, somebody report it that, hey, I'm not able to run this report, what do I do? So there is this role called WD-support. So WD-support is the role with which work this support people log in. So if you're a part of a team where you are maintaining an existing implementation, you log in as WD support and you are able to perform these kind of tasks without any additional approval. Okay, so you don't need an approval. So if you already have, you already have access to the WD support user, you're logged in as WD support, you are able to perform all those tasks. 
But if you have a specific user who's, who's working, doing his own thing, and then he realizes, you know what, actually, I accidentally created an organization. I want to go back and change the name of this organization. If you were able to create it, you already have the role to edit it. If there is something else, let's say you wanted to execute a report, you wanted to execute an integration, and you don't see the power to do that, you don't have the role to do that, that means you need an approval. You will submit a support ticket to your support organization. Your support organization will take and check that should you have that access. They will check with your manager that does this person need access to this specific report or should this person be able to run this, this uh, integration. So they will take that approval and if it is right, then only that role will be assigned to you. Otherwise not. Make sense? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Nobody's. Thanks a lot. Sure. No problem at all. All right. So like I mentioned, no class tomorrow. We reconvene next week, next Saturday, Sunday. Uh, till then, um, take care of yourself. Have a great weekend and be safe. Thank you. Thank you for attending the session. I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also feel free to ask your questions in the comment section below, and we will reply to them at the earliest.